back to the channel. This is Wendy's Pet Salon. I am Wendy and this is my little pet salon at home. And I want to say hello to all the subscribers and if you are new, welcome on board. And if you've just come across the channel and you're wondering what this is all about, basically I'm just a little pet groomer uh, and I share some of the things that I, I do at the pet salon. Um, I've been grooming for a long time and I'm hoping to share skills, help pet owners, help new groomers, anybody really. So um, I just wanted to say uh, apologies, been no videos this week. I have actually been um, a bit poorly in the week. Um, I think if, for those of you that have watched the channel, if you remember I had the strep throat, um, I think whenever I'm, I've got a cold and things like that, it tends to flare up. So um, I woke up one particular morning and I felt like my throat was going to close up. So um, I think uh, it was just basically, you know, uh, a cold coming on and it just seems to go into my throat. And obviously being self-employed, Self-employed dog groomer, you can't keep us down for long. We have to crack on. We're self-employed. Nobody's paying our wages. So I did have uh, some time off, but I'm back. Um, so if I apologise, if I look a bit puffy, I look a bit odd, it's just because I've not been feeling too well. But we're back. Um, we didn't have any comments um, anyway as to what that you might like to see. I am gonna tell you kind of things that I've got in this week. And also to tell you about, I did a video back a while ago about my um, clippers and blades and storage um, solutions. So basically um, the three Fs, let me just show you what I'm talking about. <clears throat> just to go back if you remember I have my blades in these and they're quite slim and they do take a lot of blades in that um, And if you look back on the video on the just on the description There is the information for this, but I have found another one with slightly larger um, Plastic tubs um, there is only six um, but I tend to use them for the the bigger ones, the three Fs that don't quite fit in here. So uh, also sort of two Fs, they would be, you know, they would fit in there as well. So I just wanted to let you know, and I'll put this tub, excuse me, in the uh, description uh, when I finish this video. Um, and if I do miss things off on the description and you, you're listening to the, please just write me a comment and I'll add it in the description, you know, straight away if I've missed something. Because I do tend to forget things. So, I don't do it on purpose. It's just part of my condition. So, I have to excuse me. <clears throat> uh, so... We can write off today because I'm still getting myself right. Although um, Chewy and Ringo are back, so I might just do a small clip on Chewy and Ringo. Um, if you remember uh, back, if you've been watching the channel, um, I, used, I do two um, Yorkshire Terriers, very tall, leggy uh, Yorkshire Terriers, and unfortunately, one of them had a bad eye. So. Um, Unfortunately, I couldn't get them back in. I didn't have the spaces, so mum gave them a haircut. If I can find their pictures, I'll put them up here. Uh, she'd probably go mad about it, but <laughs> I'm sure she'll see the funny side. And um, we'll, um, we'll do a before and after. Um, and she did message me when I was poorly and said, um, I can't wait for them to cut for their haircuts. <laughs> and I said, oh, I'm actually poorly at the moment, but I will let you know, but she is coming, everything's fine. I said, it's all good, I'm okay. So, um, yeah, so we'll just have a quick look at Chewie and Ringo when they come. Um, and uh, he, like, his eye is all better and everything now, so that's, uh, that's good. So, um, we have got, um, 
got to spring a spaniel that I just keep all off. She's very old, very fragile. Um, Lola Fox Terrier, another one. A lot of my clients are getting elderly now. Um, and that's a thing with, um, you know, doing your clients for a long time when they do get older, um, you know, and they do get sensitive and you've sort of grown with them. You are sensitive to the needs as they've gone on. You know, if you can imagine you've got a very old dog that's in an unfamiliar place with an unfamiliar person, it can be added stress. So, uh, well, all of my customers, they all come on a regular basis, as you know, as I keep saying. Um, and it makes a big difference to the dogs because, you know, these are all added stresses. Um, and as they've got older, I've been able to uh, i'm aware of all their medical issues um sometimes you know you may forget as a pet owner to tell people tell people tell the groomer you know if they've had um any issues i mean we do we do ask as groomers um, but when you know the full history, you've been with them, like you go to the same vet, they've got a record of everything. We have a record of everything, um, you know, uh, on, a, on a longer period of time when we've seen lumps grow, we can see that they're growing. You go to a random person, that, that may, lump may mean nothing to them, that's just the first instance with it. Whereas we th watch things grow, we we can tell work out their body language how they are because we we got to know them over a long period of time and um it it all helps so and you've got also that good relationship with the client um and everybody that comes in uh, to my salon here i always say has everything been okay um you know and I will tell them if I notice things and it, it's it's just a better relationship. I feel it's better for the dog and we're a lot less stress. Um, you know, um, it, it's just a lot less. I've got lovely Buddy who you've seen before. He um, he was going to come with his friend, uh, Milo the Dachshund, but he's on a special medication uh, shampoo. Medi medicated shampoo. Excuse me. Uh, and I've got a good cat at the end of the day. Um, excuse me. I've got face cream that's not quite sinking in on my face. And then when I'm, I come in here, there's still hairs floating around as much as I hoover. It did just seem to cling to my face when I move. I've just put my apron on, so there's bits of hair everywhere. So we have, I've got a Border Terrier, I've got a lovely Clover who you've met before, who's all off um, Cocker Spaniel. We've got little Georgie, which you've, you've met before. We've got a little crooked face, it's like a Shih Tzu. Um, so that's this, this week. So, you know, if there's anything that, <clears throat> I have to excuse me. It's awful when you can't uh, talk properly. Um, oh, I have got cats as well. Have I? What's it? Yeah. So I've got also a cockapoo. Um, I missed a couple of pages. So poodles, spaniel. Um, I've got some cats. Um, yeah, so I've, there's, there's plenty there. Um, to go out, you know, maybe feet, nails is another one that people sometimes struggle with, you know, um, pet owners and um, groomers. I am seeing, um, I have a, a sort of group of, of uh, groomer friends that we, we sort of talk to, talk to, talk to each other. It's Monday and the words are not flowing, are they? I do apologise. And um, we do talk and we we are finding at the moment, not so much myself and those ones that have sort of a regular flow of the same customers, but those that are doing um, new customers quite a lot of the time, 
we're finding that um, there's an increase in the the flow of uh, uh, aggressive dogs coming through um, and surprisingly really um, the nice fluffy dogs not so much uh, the other dogs so um, at the moment um, we, we've had a, a few issues with dogs that now because of their aggression issues the owners are now having to do them themselves um, I can't tell you for the reasons why those in particular dogs um, have had the issues because I've not been with them I don't know them personally so I can't um, I, I can't tell you about them um, but I know that there will be some areas so they've no choice really but to do their own dogs but there may be feet and inside pads around feet that they might struggle with so you know that could be a topic to talk about um, not just in general but uh, as to why you know those reasons might be there um i found in the past a lot to do with how they've been introduced as a um, as a puppy uh sometimes the the say that as they're a tiny puppy the breeders may not touch them and handle them as much um, they may not have been washed or touched the faces touched the feet and things and, it, and it, it's all really important um, I've had a, a, a litter of puppies in my time and they were pretty much potty trained as when they were going and I've touched them, they've been bathed obviously with being a groomer, you know, I bathed them and made sure their feet were trimmed and their nails and things like that. But, you know, many breeders aren't necessarily groomers um, and they fed them and cared for them and stuff, but the, the touching element has not been there. And then they come to you excuse me, as a little fluffy pet um, and you see them and they're fragile and you think, um, you know, many people are told from the vet when they go for their injections and they get the first lot of advice is they don't have to have a trim till the six months and we hear this a lot and in it, my my opinion and a lot of other um groomer's opinion um is that you've just missed a giant window of opportunity and i know i said it in my puppy intros but introducing at that early stage will make a massive difference i can tell um being a you know a long time groomer the dogs that i've done from puppies to the ones that i've done later on I can tell the the difference. They ha it and like I said in my other videos, when the world's a wonderful place and you're a happy puppy and you know, um, it's a lot easier to get them to desensitise to the grooming. You know, we can use lick mats if they're a little bit a bit bit more of a a wriggly puppy. Um, obviously they do go through the teething stage so some, at some point it can be difficult to, to trim the face but if they've had that early sensation of being touched and brushed and stuff like that, that they may bypass that. So it, it, it's all to do with, with the touch and the training and basically if they have, haven't had, even at home, you know, the, the brushing and the combing and the bathing and the touching in that particular time after they can build up fear to it because it's something that you've suddenly introduced. Oh, I'm six months, I'm going to the hairdresser, so now I'm going to have everything. Um, and I'm going to have this and that and the other. And they have built up that a little bit more fear. I always say, <laughs> I try and put it down to this. It's like, when you're a little toddler, you know, you don't have a clue about the, you know, the dangers of walking on the road and stuff. That's why you have your, your parents. But if it's like, at my age, if you said, right, you're going to jump out of a plane, I'm going to go, 
Oh no. <laughs> so you can imagine at six months, I've not had any of this. This is not, this is alien. And I've built up these fears. Um, I'm going to protest against it. So it, in a way, they get trained to not like it because it's, it's, um, it's just so alien and so major, a major touching all over the bath. It is an absolute um, blow to the system. Chewy, Chewy and Ringo. I've just come now, so I'm just gonna give them five minutes because they haven't been for a while because uh, um, Ringo had the eye issues. I think it was Ringo. I think so I'll check <laughs> yeah so it, it's a blow to the system so you know um, the earlier you can touch them and and introduce these things you know very carefully very gently you know you can reward them for it just touch without the brush without the comb just touch and reward so um, obviously you've got a, a trimming breed any breed will come and they'll go on the grooming table and we do that for lots of different reasons um obviously for us for the safety of the dog you know we're on the level if we were scrambling around on the floor it would, i don't think our career in grooming would last very long <laughs> we, we'd, we'd have very severe back injuries um so you know at home putting a rubber mat on the top putting your dog on and just, even just having them stand still for a second, you know, put them on the floor, reward. Put them on for 30 seconds, stand still, reward, put them on the floor. And then you build it up slowly, slowly. And um, we, we'd, we'd be firm about it, um, you know, and we'd be calm and, you know, we just make everything calm and gentle. As you've seen with, um, the little Yorkies, Milo and Pip. We just take it gradual and we'll talk to them nicely because it's that's how we talk to them when the baby is, oh, you're a good boy, you know. Um, sometimes it maybe sounds ridiculous, but it, it really helps soothe them and, and and it's built up over time. And, the you know, uh, when, if you think... I'm going to take, for instance, a cockapoo. They're high maintenance, they grow a lot of hair and they grow it quick, depending on the cross. But generally, you know, you've got the nice flowing long locks. They grow quite quickly. So if you've come to six months and you haven't had a trim at all, it's going to be a little bit more traumatic because they've got lots of hair. When you come as a baby, between sort of three three and four months for the first one, they've got less hair, it dries quicker, it's a lot less time and you can build it up. A cockapoo sometimes at six months, or you know, a hairy breed at six months has got a lot of hair to be dried. So you've got to try and lessen the trauma as well um, and sort of think outside the box, uh, you know, and when you get to sort of a, a lot of people make the mistake because um you you feel so protective of them and you you maybe don't feel that you can you can trust the groomer and you know they should be a little bit bigger or whatever but believe me in the long run you have a very good groomer that's going to you know take care of your puppy and going to do it nice and gently and you know um it will make a world of difference and it will make your life a lot easier as well because then you know you'll have the ease at home to be able to put a bit of spray on or spray on them or on the brush and brush them through and then get the comb through and you know your dog groomers pet groomers will give you all the advice in the world that's what we're here for because not only does it make the dog um more comfortable they have a better experience but the the groomer does as well because there's nothing more than a puppy between six and nine months that's really stressed out because this is a complete new thing and they've had nothing they've had nothing at all um there are the the exception um 
and you know sometimes you know you, you may have a pet owner that's done a lot at home but we don't know as groomers so and because we ha have been faced with a lot of those people that have done that have left it too late um it, it can be quite difficult quite difficult and um quite difficult for the owner to understand why sometimes um so i just wanted to make that point uh, when we're talking about um touching feet and stuff like that um because it's very easy for a dog to learn to bite um because what they'll do is they'll warn you they'll give you a little nibble and um, if that isn't working each bite gets harder and to the point where you may be faced with a you know a groomer that's not as experienced in handling and things like that and they get a bit badly um because maybe they haven't um they haven't been introduced early enough and it, it just starts i'm not saying that this happens to everybody because it doesn't um but we see a lot of it and the handling and the puppy intro and everything is just so important to your whole puppy's training you know your potty training you sit you stay your recall grooming especially with a high maintenance dog is needs to be included in in all that and um yeah, so the puppy will learn to bite because it wants to stop you doing what you're doing. It feels uncomfortable. It's going to learn to bite and then it'll bite harder. And then you'll get to a point where, you know, you go into lots of different groomers. We see it a lot because you... And another thing people do is they don't be honest and tell you. And it, the more informed we are, the better we can help you. So if you are going, are you finding that this is the case with you and your dog is, you know, you've been told by the groomer that, you know, it's thrashing about and it's biting and it's biting is getting harder, it's getting older. The older it gets, um, the more their teeth are formed and the harder it's going to be, the harder the bite's going to be. And, you know, if you've got small children as well like that, you know, they're learning that to stop people doing things to them is to bite them, to get them to stop. So we don't want that kind of scenario. And, um, you know, all, all, all that I would suggest is that you go, as soon as you've had your injections, if you don't feel comfortable leaving them at three months, leave it a little bit later, but don't leave it too long um and go and visit your groomer go and speak to your groomer um you know um get a recommendation um so that you're not taking your anxiety with you as well because obviously you are going to be nervous leaving your puppy for the first time so make sure it is somebody that you are comfortable with i've had it where people have brought their puppies just to run around before i've even done anything they've had their injections um, and they just run around. I used to do that at Warrington quite a lot. Um, sorry, I've got hair on my face. Um, I used to do that quite a lot. We used to have them just wandering around and those um, as well that were having difficulty just to come and be here, be in the area without even touching them. And then you can build it up. And, um, you know, if we are if we are aware of everything, if you are totally honest with us, there's a lot that we can do to help you. But if you're not telling us that you've had this experience where your dog's biting and it's, believe me, it's only gonna get worse. Um, I have had a customer in the past that I've tried so hard with, I tried for 18 months, but they weren't working with me. Everybody in the family was saying different things and the dog was just biting me harder. I make I make headway and I do a lovely haircut and I would have to um, you know on the odd occasion have a muscle in certain areas and things like that which we don't want to do. We would like them, if at all possible, for them to consent to what we're doing. 
um, and that's half the battle as well, you know, and, you know, unfortunately I had to let that customer go and that is probably what will happen to you if you're not honest about your dog having difficulties, you know, not liking the groom. We've seen Archie, he wasn't going well with his, his first groomer and he was getting a little bit out of hand. He's come to me, we've had a, a fresh start and we've started me as me, we mean to be going on and we've added things, elements of relaxation and we've built it up slowly. Um, and he didn't have a lot of hair as well. So I'm going off on a tangent. I've been talking for 10 minutes now <laughs> and I need to crack on with... Um, with the little boys down here, which I'll introduce to you. But I hope this is all making sense because we just want to help you and we want your dog to have a really nice experience. Um, and it's, you know, it, it can be a stress in the family. I can imagine if you, you, know, you know, you're struggling with your dog's haircut, it's, it's awful. So if I can help you with the, you know, maybe uh, touching up the feet and things like that, how you can go on. Um, you may not be able to touch them or, 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 or cut them straight away, but we can maybe help you uh, in, in a way that eventually you will get them to enjoy them and not, um, not train them to that grooming is a bad thing. And a lot of the time, that's what it is. They've been trained that grooming is a bad thing. And if they'd have just been introduced early doors, gently, gently built it up, built it up, built it up, introduce all these things over time, um, you find that they like going to the groomers, they understand the whole routine, and, you know, they enjoy it rather than it being a total struggle every single time and um, I wouldn't want to go, let's face it. So anyway, I'm going to introduce to you um, Jim and Ringo, who you may have seen before. Come on my sweeties. Come on. Ooh. There we go. There's one little man. Um, uh, he doesn't like um, he likes everything, but apart from trimming his front legs. So we leave that to last. And we may have to sort of struggle a little bit, um, but we get there eventually. Um, Mum uh, did try to do the haircut, and like I say, I'll, I'll put a picture of the haircut that she did very well with. Um, we set them on, you know, they're not knotty or anything like that, so she's done a really good job um, of looking after them and if um, I mean that and that sometimes happens you know you maybe don't you groom as poorly and you want to do a set me on you know it happens come here my sweet and this one little guy this little guy it actually wasn't his eye it was actually his teeth that were causing the issue here can you see where the hairs are on different colour now it's just skin damage now that will grow out eventually, hopefully. It'll grow out that well. But he's been very poorly. Um, and he has a very strange bark, a little bit like a sea lion. Ooh, ooh, don't you? Um, you maybe see if we can catch it on um, on video, because it's ever so funny. So um, it's like it's coming out, out the wrong dog, if you know what I mean. Yes, it's your mate. So I'm gonna crack on with these two today. And um, so, yeah, it's, um, we, we, at the moment we are finding that the, um, there's a lot of um, people coming through with aggressive dogs. Um, I don't know where that's filtered from, but that's what we're finding at the moment. And, um, you know, if we can help you try and understand um, what we're trying to tell you, um, in a nice way instead of just being refused um, because we don't want to refuse we want to do what's best for the health and well-being of your dog but if it's going to stress the dog out 
you know, you could, uh, and it's thrashing about, we could cause injury and that is the last thing that we want to do. So if you just work with your groomers, um, you know, if they're, they're saying, well, you know, this, this is what's happening. Sometimes the groomers will even video what's going on. You'll do your short clip um, and try and help you understand what's, what's going on and what you can do touch wise. So um, I just thought I'd mention that today because it seems to be over the last few weeks we are having quite a lot of um, dogs coming through like that and, I, and maybe it's because they're um, having to search for, for other groomers or they, they're trying themselves um, and they've tried themselves for so long maybe they can do the body and things but they're struggling with other areas. Um, so, I mean, they're more likely to trust you as an owner to, to touch them. They may not bite you, but obviously a stranger in a strange place, you know, and especially if there's a different place each time, it's more add-ons, more add-ons. So I'm going to crack on and we'll, sh we'll try and do a little video at the end um, so you can see what they look like after. I won't video it today because time's ticking and I'm a little bit slow. Uh, because of how I'm feeling, I'm a little bit puffy, aren't I? So um, I hope you all have a great week. Don't forget to try and put your comments down. And if you like the video, please give it a like. If you're um, somebody out there that's struggling with your dog, please let's see if we can help. Um, this is what we're here for. This is what, you know, showing love to your pets is is all about to try and help them like this experience because it's something that they're going to have all their life <laughs> so i will uh, see you in a little bit have a great week i'll probably say that later as well um and i'll see you in a bit look at these <gasps> Ooh, twinkle, 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 twinkle. let's put your colors on everybody nice uh -oh. is she here uh -oh. in the UK it's absolutely peeing down it's not too wet out there do you want a wee have a wee <gasps> yay so we're all ready got five minutes to spare done really well there actually um considering I was chit chatting <laughs> um Folks feeling a bit better as so well it always does when uh you know the further you get on in the day Hair. That's the only thing when you put face cream on, hair sticks to it and you spend all day trying to get it off. So, down the arch. <laughs> um, I'm on my skinny coffee. I was on the green thing, the green powders, um, trying to help bloating, trying to get like sort of excess fluid off ready for my dress fitting next week for the wedding for those that don't know I am getting married in August so I'm trying to you know uh, stay healthy and I'm trying to watch my diet and you know I really need to get back on the protein bars because I tend to get so busy in the day that I don't eat and, and maybe a lot of you groomers find that you're just busy all day and then you hold on to your weight because you're not eating on regular intervals. And even though my kitchen is just there, I just sometimes don't. I'm lucky if I get a minute to go to the toilet sometimes because I don't like to leave the dogs on their own in here. So I've gone back to my skinny coffee, um, which is a one a day. And it just helps sort of flush your things out. So I'm going to give it a whirl for the 28 days. I did have, I used, did used to drink it and it used to really help a lot um, because we tend to hold on to a lot of stuff, don't we? So uh, hopefully that will help. And uh, obviously back to football. Um, I actually scored in our practice matches uh, last week, which I was absolutely um, flabbergasted. Um, just goes to show, you know, when you 
practice, the wind's blowing the door. So they've both, they've both gone now. Mum is delighted now. They're back short. And just as she's putting them in the car, their heavens opened. And I'm not joking you, the UK has had so much rain this year so far. I, all I can say is I hope the water board is saving this water because we could, honestly, create many, many ponds for ducks. I don't even know why that came be tonight. <laughs> But yeah, it's absolutely chucking it down. I'll just uh, turn the camera around. It's just grim. It's just raining all the time. Yeah, so my next, my next customer has just come. Um, he's been a bit poorly. Um, he's had a little bout of kennel cough. Um, he has been vaccinated against it, so it wasn't as severe as kennel cough can be. Um, well, that's what they think it was anyway, so, um, but he's fine now. He's not coughing or, or anything. It's been a while, I think. He's had some medication. So I'm going to crack on with, with Dylan. Um, but yeah, please do um, use me as an avenue to help you, you know, whether you are a new uh, groomer or, you know, a pet owner that needs some help and advice. If I can't help you, um, with things that I can um, recommend to you. I can maybe uh, recommend a different avenue for you to go, a different person. Um, I do know a lot of people, uh, or I'm aware of a lot of people in the industry. Um, so, um, you know, I'm not saying that I can help you with everything, but I can maybe suggest an avenue where you could go down like for instance with the issues that you're having you know you may be having with grooming and things like that you maybe need to go and see a behaviorist um you know and they can maybe uh, a behaviorist slash trainer you know maybe somebody that's that's familiar with the grooming as well so that the you know if it is grooming related they can help you with that if they're not don't really know anything about grooming at all as a behavioralist and things like that then maybe they are not the person for you there are many groomers that just specifically um specialize in that in that area so like i say i know it's a very early doors um channel but you know if i can help one person then i've achieved so you know and even if it is helping you trim inside a foot, around a foot, a nail, a way of, you know, you may be struggling with faces, how to hold faces while you're grooming as a new groomer, you're struggling with something, you're struggling with um, a customer, um, they continually want to come to you, but you find that there's a little bit of, you know, you at loggerheads uh, and you're not, you know, you don't, we don't have to be the groomer for everybody and you know if you feel like that you're not the groomer for that dog then do say say so and you know have a look like we do with our groomers group um if it's something that you know we may be fully booked but we've got somebody that's approached us that's got a difficult dog and they've been honest with us um there may be a groomer that's got facilities to help so we'll then pass that client on and try and help you know um we know our strengths and weaknesses and we know the times that we've got and we know how many clients we've got and the things that we can do so please use this uh, channel as a vessel to try and help you with because i'm definitely not saying that i am the perfect groomer and i can help you with everything but i can maybe suggest areas that you can try and i'll always go down the the health and well-being route i'll always do it like the cat's always based on tolerance um we've always got the animals um you know in mind for everything we do and also we want to provide a service that you know that you want and that the dogs are benefiting from 
Um, we are aware that people are different and um, one of the things, oh my battery, I've been talking that much. <laughs> one of the things that, you know, a lot of us um, might struggle with is um, understanding what the customer actually wants. And um, I think of the word now, the word, the w I need the word, interpretation. <laughs> um, interpretation uh basically what the the customer's trying to tell us so you know they might say sure not too sure they might say teddy cut they might say puppy cut they might say um flag tail they might say pom-pom thing this just you know uh, because i've like talked to a lot of people groomed a lot of dogs over the years um i kind of understand that side and it sometimes we can you know misinterpret what the customer wants um and my advice would be always always do your consultation always take the dog in just don't take the dog in and then go and then go oh you must have that connection you know you must put the dog in the tail and talk and, and whatever because that communication is so so important and um I can take that for granted because I do it automatically. It's like riding a bike now for me. I just do that. The first thing that I'll do, my customers will say is, everything has been all right. I want to know. Last time they couldn't come because he got an eye problem. You know, I like to know. Um, like they told me about Dylan today. You, you must be informed about everything because if you're not, then you can't do your job to the best of your ability and there's something underlying, we need to know about it. Because, you know, it's just for the health and well-being of the, the animal, that's the way it's done. So, from me telling you about <laughs> what things we can do, like, uh, like in the week, um, I'm just trying to um, say what the channel is here to help you with so I can show you things that I do generally um, I can you know how how I would do it and like I say I don't blow my own trumpets I'm not saying that I'm the best groomer or anything like that but what I have to remember is that I have a closed book and I'm full for, for myself and my little salon I'm full, so I must be doing something right now. So um, I want to be able to help other people do that. And because I'm not in the salon environment anymore, I can't help people. And I do feel like I need to. Um, like I like to help the owners out. Um, I like to, you know, talk to them. I like to suggest products. I like to, you know, you've got the dog that's maybe suffering with a hot spot. I have a loose ceiling in it. It's just, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Uh, so, so yeah, and we all want to do everything safely. We want to do a good job and we want to create a lovely positive place where customers, dogs and you, and it's all a nice balance, um, including obviously what you, you charge as a groomer and how, you know, another ball game. But, um, yeah, but I am gonna crack on now, because uh, I've given Dylan a few minutes just to chill, because he does get a little bit stressed. Don't you, Dylan? Don't you? Mm -hmm. He gets a little bit stressed, so I'll just give him a few minutes, especially with him not being so well. He, he comes on a regular basis. He's a six weekly dog. The only thing that everybody gets naughty on you is the base of your tail, isn't it? Yeah, because it because his coat's maintained on a on a regular basis, it um, it keeps quite nice because it's in good condition, so it, it doesn't get knotted. But because he's wagging his tail all, all the time and the base of it, he sort of gets all knotty, doesn't it? Just with friction, friction, friction. So yeah, I hope I haven't chatted too much and you haven't all gone to sleep. Um, but I've missed a whole weeks of talking because I wasn't very well. And it sort of spoiled the week, if you know what I mean. So um, it is a little bit sore, 
um, and feels a little bit closed up and stuff but as groomers will know or self-employed people we have to crack on and um, we have some tablets and we crack on and we make sure we keep hydrated if, even if we don't eat we need to be hydrated so yeah so um yeah so have a great week please do write me a comment give us a like give us a share if you haven't um subscribed already please consider subscribing and then you'll get notified and even if you don't you can turn your notifications off and still come and check back um and see how what we're doing some of the things in the salon but like i say it's all down to you really i can do bits and bobs through the week um Hopefully I'll, I'll do some kind of bit. Listen to the rain, can you hear the rain? Wow, honestly, I think we've got enough water now for a good few years. It's been that much. I know the farmers are struggling because the, the fields are so sodden. Um, so listen at it coming down, honestly. Oh, it's actually hailing. I know it's hailing. It's the 15th of April and it's hailing, oh my goodness. So have a great week. I hope it's better weather where you are. Um, and like I say, give us a comment, give us a like, give us a share, hit that button. Ding, ding, and uh, I'll see you through the week.